Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about that cloud complexity as an industry over the years has seen millions of dollars that are spent getting workloads in the cloud, which has produced a very complex distributed architecture as a result. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, especially when we're talking about an article I wrote, so. I love I love me some me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're going to do a great job on this one. I've got every faith in you. So you know, a nice opening question uh, that that we've got here is: How should the CIOs and CTO and COOs be dealing with co cloud complexity moving forward? I think first and foremost, ask the question. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, it's funny. IT has a tendency to kind of build things in the most complex way and the most costly way possible. And the reality is that the CIOs and the CTOs and the COOs and even the CEOs and the boards of directors are really kind of the blocking factor and the, their ability to, you know, kind of make things so complex that we're digging ourselves into a deeper hole. And, and so you know, one of the questions that I always have for people who are, you know, presenting things in front of me that they're trying to improve something is what are we doing with the outcome of the complexity that's going to happen? or the other things that are you know, data, system distribution, things like that, that are gonna be the end result of these systems. And back in the day, we had everything in a centralized environment, either timeshares or mainframe-based computers, and then we moved distributed systems. Things got very complex, then we moved to the internet. Things got even more complex. Now we're moving to cloud computing, where we may have silos of information that exist on different public cloud providers, private cloud, private cloud providers, and by the way, our existing legacy systems don't go away. So how are you going to manage all that complexity and make sure that you're able to uh, leverage the systems for what, they're, what, what they should be able to do? You can change them to adapt to the needs of the business. They would argue that leveraging cloud and leveraging dis different distributed systems really kind of facil facilitates agility, and I think it does. But what we're running into is that the systems are becoming so complex, they're very difficult to manage. We're hitting a tipping point where we have so many services, so many applications, so many workloads, so many databases, so many data points out there that we have to think differently in how we manage the complexity. So one of the things I did in the article, I said, you know, cloud complexity becomes a big bummer because we're not thinking about how this stuff will affect the future state of the architecture and how we're going to manage complexity going forward. So it's okay to have complex environments. I think there's no way around moving to some complexity, but we should limit the complexity that we're building. And the complexity that we do build, we should have an appropriate path in how we're going to manage it. So people should be asking the question. I don't see the question being asked either by line managers or developers or you know C-level folks within the organization as to what we're going to deal with when we have the in-state systems, how these things are going to work and play well together. And how they're going, how are they going to add value to the business? And I just think it's something that should be should be brought up. Yeah, very true. And the article does cover some great points. I'd like to ask you a question. Actually, it's a, probably a big question, but uh, and and it probably warrants a, a, a sizable answer. But it would be lovely to hear your point of view from a case study point of view, without naming names of an example that you've you've worked in or you've been involved in as part of the project on working out a resolve to the complexities and everyone getting tied up in all the different data points and you know developing business from legacy and you know things that have become outdated where you know the transition hasn't been that you know fluid in the cloud environment it'd be great for you to if you could i know i'm putting you on the spot here but it'd be really good to see or, or if you can give us an overview of that case yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, big financial institutions are the uh, the ones who are you know violating this rule many many times, and so they know they're going to be dealing with different complexity. They're okay with layering systems on top of systems on top of systems. Now we're layering cloud systems on top of traditional distributed computing systems and mainframe systems, internet-based systems that we built over the years, but they're not necessarily getting to the essence of how we're going to deal with the complexity and managing the thing. And so as they add these layers to it basically it compounds the issue going forward. And so it's almost like, you know, rings of a tree. Um, it's very easy to deal with a sapling, but it's very difficult to deal with this, you know, 100 year old oak tree that's out there. And 
everything has to interoperate one to another, everything has to communicate one to another. And if they where they run into a problem is when they change the system, when they buy a company, buy a bank, buy another bank, they have to change their uh, um, trading philosophies, uh, trading stances, things like that, regulatory changes occur. Then they have to go through a uh, fire drill in order to change the systems to accommodate the changes need to, needed to the systems. And that should take maybe a month or two, or it takes two years because of the complexity that they kind of you know cobble together over time without thinking and how they're going to manage the complexity. So my advice to them is to put an abstraction layer between you and the complexity. So you're not dealing with the complexity directly. You're not going through all the native consoles, all the native APIs. And I realize my uh, propeller is spinning full blast on a C-suite show, but you're not dealing with the technical details of doing it. In essence, you're dealing with a meta tool that's able to, in essence, guide you through how you're going to disconnect and add systems, integrate systems, different data points that are out there. There's no miracle tool out there that's able to do it, but it's really a matter of planning what needs to be done, getting the technology in place to abstract you from the complexity, and also limiting the complexity in the first place. Yeah, exactly right. And that leads us on nicely. You've shared some great tips there already, but we obviously always have your top three tips towards the end of the show anyway. So I hope we haven't sort of, you know, um, it, you know, given too many tips away already to destroy those three ones. So do you have any other tips that you could share, Dave? Because I'm sure there's, you know, there's some C-suites out there that are thinking, you know, this, this could be, you know, give, give me the answers I need or, you know, a, a chance to ask better questions. So, you know, what are your top three tips for cloud complexity and, and moving forward, Dave? Yeah, these are net new. I mean, planning is king. So uh, what, we're, what we're basically preaching here is, uh, you know, nothing that's earth shattering. Uh, if you're going to build these very complex architectures, which I think most enterprises are going to build, you got to plan and how you're going to deal with them, plan on your tooling, plan on your abstraction layers, plan on your automation systems, plan on your management, cloud ops, you know, uh, AI ops, sec ops, all those sorts of things need to be thought through before you start putting these things together. And I, I know it's boring. I, I, I know it's something people don't, typically don't want to deal with. And at big companies, it's meetings to plan meetings. But the reality is you can't avoid it. Planning has to occur. Never believe the vendors. I think that a lot of the vendors kind of uh, get in this mantra that everything's easy and you should move all your applications in the cloud and move all your applications onto the private cloud or what have you, whatever they're selling. And I think you have to kind of ask the question in terms of what their real motiv motivations are in that that kind of space. They're, they're, they're you know sometimes looking out for you, but the most time they're just basically telling you how to leverage their technologies. Ultimately, you're the king of your problem domain. They don't understand as well as you do. So you have to manage it accordingly. So don't let the vendors in essence guide your strategy. Integration is a pre not post activity. So if we're thinking about integration of data, integration of APIs, integration of uh, security, integration of governance, all these very detailed things that have to occur, that has to occur pre-building these architectures versus post-building these architectures. We love adding security, governance, uh, data integration, all these things after we've made the deployment. That can't happen because by the time we do that, it's kind of too late to get into the metadata aspects, the tooling you need, the different interfaces, different technology you need to make that happen. And so. That question needs to be asked ahead of time, not post-project. Great tips. What a fine show we've had this week. <laughs> <laughs> we see if we do say so ourselves, right? If we say so ourselves, we're both modest. We can take it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what we'll see what the uh, comments say down below. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll be deleting all the expletives. Don't worry about that. I do that on a weekly basis. <laughs> Dave, all joking aside, that was fantastic content. Great three tips, great show, and a pleasure to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Thanks for, thanks for being here. It's great to be here and think about the stuff ahead of time, guys. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching the show. Obviously, you can catch us on the podcast, which I forgot to mention in the Australia show. I, I sort of randomly forget to mention that every week. But yeah, we're on, the, we're on the podcast. You can get David and I on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, Nelson Hilliard's on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. There's some blue graphics there flashing around the screen. Um, and yeah, we've got lots going on with our blogs as well. David writes for us regularly on the website, so check out those. We've got some really cool things going on with our blogs as well as all the, the shows that we're doing so remember to like subscribe comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues and yeah thanks for watching and until next week <laughs>